Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to give my old makeover a new makeover. Today I got this beautiful desk that I did six months ago. If you want to see how I did this piece, I will leave you a link below in the description and you can see how I created this molding, gold leaf and how I restored this piece. But since this piece is not selling, I'm going to do what I best do and I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint right over it. Uh, I don't need to do anything because this piece is clean. Uh, it has a poly protection, so you can put Anis Launch Out paint directly on it. I don't have to remove any wax. You can paint over gold leaf. Uh, so it's just too pretty of a piece to be sitting here. It needs to go in its forever home. So I will make sure that happens. First thing I'm going to do is to paint it. I'm going to remove the hardware uh, for this piece. For the base color, I'm going to use cream and I will be using medium uh, Anislon chalk paint brush. Let's remove the hardware. I'm removing the hardware because I'm going to use some stamps on front drawers later. So here I'm going really thick. I'm grabbing a lot of paint on my brush, as you can see, and I'm tapping because I want this piece to be texturized. So to get a texturized look, all you have to do is just tap your chalk paint and you will get that texture. We're going to do two coats of this technique and we're going to have very nice texture, um, a very authentic texture that you cannot achieve that you cannot achieve with uh, any texture additive. Uh, this color is beautiful. I think I used it really long time ago and I forgot how it really looks. So I really love this one. It's going to be a great base for everything that is going to come. Uh, now I'm adding the second coat and I'm doing the same. I'm just tapping even more instead of doing this. Instead of doing that, I'm going more uh, thicker and closer and holding my brush straight to create this beautiful little texture all over the place. And even though this feels like a arm workout, I really have fun doing these things. It's beautiful. My second coat is completely dry. I left it overnight. It's very important to leave uh, your first base color to dry overnight because now we're going to use some uh, water and we're going to uh, activate the paint. So if you don't let it dry completely, you're risking uh, uh, lifting the paint the, and you don't want that. Uh, now I'm going to uh, layer and blend in the same time. It's not going to be your typical blend where you contour or you create ombre. We're going to create a faux look. Uh, so it's going to be blended and layered and this technique is so uh, beginner friendly. So let me show you. Here I got some more colors and I'm going to show you what I got. I got uh, Louis Blue and I got Coco. 
very nice neutral colors. I got cream because I'm going to add some more of the base color and I got three brushes for three different colors and the spray bottle because I'm going to uh, use a wet technique. So let's go. So first I got Coco. I'm grabbing an Islan brush. I'm going to use different brush for each color. One for Coco, one for Louis Blue, and one for Cream. This one is from yesterday. I just wrapped it up. And then I have a little brush for the details. So I'm getting very little paint and I'm going to start applying it everywhere. Now that I have it on, I'm going to spray a little bit and we're going to spread that around. So I'm just applying some paint here and there, spraying with water and just spreading it around. The point is to don't be perfect. You don't want to put it everywhere. You just want here and there, some places more, some places lighter. And I'm going to cover this area here. And this you want to do section by section. So now that I apply cocoa, and you can see how uneven this is, and that is supposed to be that way, we are going to add some Louis Blue. And I'm going to actually add Louis Blue less. Here and there. I'm going to spray and blend it in. And then add a little bit of more cocoa. Then I'm going to add a little cream. And for that, I'm going to use the brush from Coco Color. Everything is supposed to be blending nice and easy. If it's not blending nice and easy, you need to spray some more water. Don't spray too much, just a little bit, and then work your way in. And if you feel like you need more water, you can always add more. So that is for this drawer. I actually like how it looks. I just want to add a touch more of Louis Blue. Once everything gets dry and we put protection, uh, you're going to see more uh, transition and different colors around. Now it's everything is wet, so. So just play with this. This is a lot of going back and forth. Uh, whatever you feel uh, like it looks right, do that. Just go back and forth, play. As I said, this is very beginner friendly. Uh, you can't go wrong with this. I promise you that. So for everybody that wants to try blending and it's afraid of blending, you can try this look and you will love it. So now I'm going to um, Use my little detail brush and I'm going to use Coco and I'm going to go into the corners to create that aged look. And as I said, this is, you can't really see so much transition now between colors, but once everything is dry, you will be able to see.
and if you feel like you went too much in just tap just tap with a cocoa brush I'm done with the first drawer. This is dry. It's going to take probably an hour to dry and for you to see uh, the transition between colors. They're not going to be very strong transitions, but they're more going to be defined than it's now. I already did this side and it's uh, dry completely. So you can see the definition more here. Is that nice soft layered blended look and I really love it I haven't done this technique in a in a very long time and I forgot how much I love to create uh, pieces like this uh, we are now going to repeat the same process on everything every drawer every leg the top just repeat the process and work in sections it's much easier that way We're all done here, everything is dry except the top, uh, but it doesn't matter because I am going to uh, do some things on the drawers and while I'm doing things on the drawers, the top is going to dry. What I got here is a redesign with Prima stamp. It's called a Botanical Encyclopedia. It's a beautiful stamp. And I'm planning just to use this part here uh, to stamp the front doors. So this stamp comes like this. This is what I'm going to do with this stamp. It comes in individual uh, stripes. So I'm just going to do this. And at the end, I'm going to do this one. To use the stamps, you just get some paint on your roller. We're going to apply this on the raised side of the stamp. This side is raised and that's where you want to apply the paint. And you just put a little bit of pressure Beautiful. And now we're going to repeat the process. Beautiful. And it's coming out uneven because we have the texture here. So this is actually fit the look I'm going for. So I love it. There we go. Beautiful. I'm going to do this now on every drawer. Now that I got my stamps on, everything looks so pretty. I wanted to do one more thing and that is distressing. I'm using a hundred grid sandpaper and I'm going to go lightly uh, over some areas. Uh, this is called two-tone distressing. That is when you have two contrasting colors. Uh, on top of each other and then you distress and you re reveal that color under and you show I'm going lightly over these areas because I have gold leaf under so if I keep going too hard I'm going to uh, show gold and I want to not I, I want to stay away from that And I'm going to sand lightly over the stamps. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to do the same on every drawer and everywhere. Now that everything is nice and dry, I'm going to protect everything using Anislon clear wax. And I'm going to uh, add some more uh, age to it by using Anislon dark wax. So here I'm applying uh, clear wax. You just want to apply it all over the place, make sure everything is protected. This is going to darken up the color a little bit, not too much. And then you want to wipe off the extra. You can use a microfiber cloth or a cheesecloth or old t-shirt for this. Now that this is uh, waxed and protected, I'm going to add some dark wax. There we go, brand new. So I'm going to start by applying it around the drawers. And I'm going extra. So I switched to this brush by Redesign with Prima because this one is pointy here and that is going to help me get into these uh, corners easier. So. As I said, I'm going extra. I want a lot. I want it to be aged. Okay, and I'm grabbing another uh, microfiber cloth to remove all this extra because now it looks like a mess. It's very important to apply clear wax first so you can move your dark wax around as you want it. Look at that, so pretty and aged. Now I'm going with a cheap brush, just adding some more details. I have better control with a little brush. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat this process to uh, every drawer and uh, actually everywhere. So at any moment, if you feel like you apply too much uh, dark wax, just get some clear and go over and that is going to uh, get some off, but not completely, just a little bit. If you wanna get rid of it completely, you have to use mineral spirits. It looks beautiful with this uh, gold leaf hardware that I already did. I really love how it's matching. I'm 
adding a little bit of more brown wax around the hardware and adding some on the hardware to match the aged look. And we're done with this piece. I really love how it turned out. I had so much fun creating layers, blending, distressing. I haven't done that in such a long time and I forgot how fun this is to do. I really love how this piece look completely aged. It's totally different from what I did before. Before it was like a glam, and now it's just age and full of character, and I know this time it will sell. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time with a new project and more ideas. Bye, guys!